Hey everyone. Uh, a couple people have asked me about how I do mo lines or how I create mo lines in my designs, um, fairways, uh, around greens, and uh, you know even potentially uh, curved mo lines. Uh, so I thought I'd do a quick tutorial on how I create these so that other people can add these to their courses if they'd like and give you some examples. Um, now it's pretty easy to uh, create the mow lines or to add the mow lines to your design, especially um, with the Inkscape piece, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Um, but one thing that is important to note, if I click on the fairway here, you can see that I'm using the satellite fairway. Uh, OPCV mesh material and yours may actually be under uh, for the basic project setting that John Meyer has created it's going to be under here these uh, satellite satellite fairway so you'll need to be using satellite image overlay in order to add the mo lines so if you're just using these dual texts up here um, it's not going to work you're not going to see the mo lines that are created so this is, I guess, a little bit more of an advanced technique. Once you've kind of learned how to create the textures with the dual text, you can move on to satellite, um, which I'll show you, you know, I use pretty much on exclusively on my courses. So what I do is I take the uh, image, the uh, uh, Google or Bing image, and I make a copy of it and use it um, to create a PSD file, a Photoshop file which is what I use for the satellite image, the overlay image um, for the course. And you can see I've been kind of playing around with this one, so I've got different versions of the of mo lines on it. But down here you can see um, I've got the background layer and then a bunch of layers above it. Uh, also, this works in Photoshop. This is not, I don't know how to do this in Photopia. Um, so maybe somebody else could create a photo Photopia uh, tutorial, but basically in Photoshop, um, I'm sure it's work. I, I'm sure it works, you know, fairly similar. I'm sure the products are fairly similar. But in Photoshop, what I do is um, you, know, you can see the trees here, and I create this stamp layer. And there's other tutorials on how to get to this overlay image. But basically, once I create this stamp, I get rid of all the trees. And this becomes the satellite image that I use uh, for overlay. Okay, so let's get to adding a mo line to one of these fairways. You can see, like I said, I've already added some. Let's go up to this fairway here and add mo lines. I'm gonna zoom in. And we're gonna add a mo line to this fairway. So one of the great things that makes this um, really easy, and I've actually got the layer in here already, but I'm going to remove it, is the uh, PNG file that you get um, from Inkscape for your terrain lowering. You can actually bring it into Photoshop, so I'm going to do that now. I've got this PNG file that's the Inkscape of Hot Springs Arlington, so I'm going to show in folder. And then I'm going to open this with Photoshop. All right. So if you've done the uh, lowering, you've seen this before, right? So what I do is edit, um, copy, and then come over here. Let me zoom out. Edit, paste special paste in place. You're going to see it comes in smaller um, and there's probably other ways to handle this but the easiest way that I've seen to handle this is just to do a control T if on Windows or edit uh, transform scale. And you can see up here there's width and height scaling so I'm just going to set the scale to 200 width 200 height and now you can see it matches or it aligns perfectly with my PSD image. I think that's 
81, 92, cut in half, 40, 97. So that's how you get to this. And once that's done, you can now see it matches. I can change the opacity on it. I can zoom in. You can see it matches nicely. With the greens and the uh, PSD file that's in place. Now, because we have this PNG file with fairways already mapped out, that really saves a lot of time in adding mow lines. Um, I used to kind of have to go back and forth to get this right, and now you really don't. You just set this opacity on a layer to 100%, and you can come in here. There's this magic wand tool. Literally just click here, and you've grabbed your selection it's that easy. Once you grab the selection, you can actually just hide this layer completely. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is create a new layer. Let's just call it Mo straight tutorial and I am going to add a pattern now um, credit to kudos to DPR he's taught me a ton if you watch his uh, even his old videos they're very helpful but one of his videos that he did was on uh, using a pattern to create mo lines on the overlay and he put that out a little while back and it's actually even easier to do now because Photoshop made some changes that made it even simpler so you go out and you find these pattern files which are just striped um, like 20 by 20 this is a 20 by 20 PNG and I think you can find them um, I mean, if you look at his old videos like it was really easy to find stripe pattern exactly where he found it but I mean if you click on images gosh there's there's a million of these right so all you need is one of these patterns that is seamless um, and you download it and you add it as a pattern file once you have it here um, you can add the file as a pattern file and then once you have it added as a pattern file I think it's right here new pattern and then you import the actual file in here. Once you have it, you can see I just added it into my selection. So undo. You can also just, I usually just drag and drop the pattern. doesn't really matter which one you select now. I have a 40 by 40, 20 by 20, a 10 by 10. doesn't matter and I'll show you why. You just drag it out here. got this pattern file. Okay, so now I've got this pattern file. I'm going to move it up slightly because you're actually seeing the stamp. Um, oops, don't do that. I'm going to move it up slightly so you're not seeing the stamped out stuff underneath it. And you can see all you have to do now is change the opacity down to like five percent and now you've got a mo line so it's that easy right to create a mo line on a fairway it's that easy to have like you know customization obviously takes a little more time but let like let's say you really like that and this is the right width and you've got it on the fairway and you just want to add it and go file save watch it save Go over here to Unity. Unity is going to load the new PSD file that we just saved. That's going to take a second. And then what I'm going to have to do is find the hole that we just added it to, which is right up here. And you can see, very easy to add mo lines to this particular fairway. Super simple. Okay. Now. Let's do a little more customization on it. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop. 
here's the thing that was added uh, after DPR did the video. So if you double click this thumbnail, it brings up this pattern fill dialog box. And this is where you can make some changes that were added later that are great. So let's say I want, you see how easy that was for me to get the mo lines aligned straight. I just, you just kind of play with the angles and you kind of get used to it. You start to get a feel for where you actually click within this angle dialog box and you can bring it down to this, you know, a degree. And then at the same time, and here's why you don't need multiple stripe um, seamless images anymore or textured images anymore because you can actually scale them now. Um, so if, you know, those mo lines are like too big, you can just scale them back. So let's say it's more like a mo line is, you know, something like that. Bam. Now hit OK. Let me click File, Save. Watch it save. Go back into Unity. Now you're going to see tighter mo pattern with straight lines pointing directly at the green. Okay, super simple. Looks great though. All right. Next step is all right. A little more complex, right? So that's kind of this is where you probably want to start with most of your courses. Um, but let's say you really want more of a curved look. Now I don't love this technique, but it's the only one I've been able to find to make them curve. Basically, what I do is I come in here to this. Um, let's make sure I'm on the right pattern. Okay. So come in here and you right click on this excuse me right click on this layer convert to smart object while it's doing that it'll actually change the way this looks so you you can go back from here you could undo but you kind of need to have your your opacity in the correct place because you can see now it's set this to opacity 100 percent so if i wanted to go up um, I'd have to redo the mo lines on this particular fairway if I wanted to increase the opacity. So now that I've got this set as a smart object, I can actually do some things to transform it. So edit, transform, warp. You can see it brings up this box around this whole window. And then you can start actually just kind of moving things around. Okay. So this is how to create all I'm doing is kind of dragging and dropping different areas to create a curve and then bring it back in closer to the selection. Now this isn't perfect. Um, it doesn't really look like a curve, but you kind of get, you start to get the point. Like I don't love this, but it's like the best way that I have found and maybe you can get better, you know, just by practicing. If you look at my Porta Chima course, I did this a lot on the Porta Chima courses. You don't want to do a lot of it, just a little bit of a curve can help. So let's just save this now. You see, I just kind of played with it. I just kind of dragged different areas to create the curve. And you want to keep it within the fairway bounds. Because now you're outside, you could go outside of the selection that you had initially grabbed. Um, so you want to stay within the fairway bounds. Now if I go back in to Unity and let it rebuild the PSD. And you can see it just kind of creates a gentle curve around the corner. It's not a lot, but it's enough to create the effect. And you could of course get, you know, silly and make this curve the whole long way if you want to take the time to skew it uh, or warp it even more I mean, you could certainly do that it just takes um, it just takes a little time let's also talk about you know this isn't just for um, fairways right so you know you could certainly add mo lines in rough areas if you'd like so let's say on this par 3 next door you know I really want this rough to have some kind of distinct mo lines which might give this kind of a nicer look from the par 3 so I come back over to Photoshop. Um, I mean, of course, I picked a hole where I actually drew over. But what I can do is go back to my stamp. 
Okay, so here's the T boxes. And I actually stamped over those T boxes because I didn't initially want to use the uh, satellite image for the T boxes. I ended up doing it anyway. It still worked out fine. And then I'm going to come up here. Instead of using the magic wand tool, right, I'm going to grab the lasso tool. And let's just lasso an area. So I just want the rough lines to kind of just, and you don't have to be perfect, you know, because you might see it in this area a little bit more and miss the, miss the car path. You know, you kind of, you just kind of play with it. So now we've got a rough area. We're going to go back to patterns, add the pattern, come back to my layers. We're going to double click on but basically you know you want your rough to be like a larger mower I think they go faster uh, and cover larger areas so let's say it's not 50% let's say it's 78 and again we want to I want I don't want it like straight at the green on this one making it look like you have rough lines mode straight at it and you just kind of play with it until you get it right you could plug in a number of course hit OK Capacity down to you know five percent somewhere in that realm five percent six percent. Let's just type in six. Hit file. Hit save. Watch it save. Come back to Unity. Bingo. And you know if, you, if the lines aren't quite right not quite lined up correctly you know because I wanted to be straighter so I go back into Photoshop double click it maybe that's a little closer hit OK file save back into unity let the magic happen in the background and you get your mow lines pointed straight at the hole. And, you know, that might just add just a little bit of a look here on this hole. That it was kind of bland in this area, and it just adds that little extra pop. That's nice. Okay, so we talked about basics, straight lines, curved lines, rough lines. Now let's talk about um, getting an area around a green that has mow lines. So I'm trying targeting, like, uh, if you saw in the very beginning, how did how did I create this? Okay. Okay. So now we're going to add the uh, mow lines around the greens, um, the circular mow lines around the greens, as I showed earlier. So here's how we're going to do it. Um, we're going to add it to this green here. We're going to re-enable our layer. Make sure this is all the way at the top going to re-enable the PNG and use the magic wand again. I'm going to select this area, which makes it so simple. And then I'm going to hide the PNG layer. And what we need to work from here is uh, an area that actually surrounds the green. So I'm going to expand the selection by about five pixels and that'll make the selection uh, incorporate this lighter which is going to be like a mow line that's lighter and you'll see what's going on here in a second then I click down here on the bottom layer of the background layer and I hit control J which creates another layer that's a copy of the selection so we're just going to call this green copy And so if I come down here and I hide, you'll see I have that little outer edge and the green in this copy, which is what we're looking for. And now I have to duplicate this green copy. So green copy copy. So we'll just do outer one. And what I'm doing now, so I have two layers that are the same. I need to drag outer 
Oops, that's the wrong one. Drag this new outer that I just created under the screen copy. And you'll see why. So now with that selected, I need to make it, um, I need to transform it and scale it. So I'm going to edit, transform, scale. And you'll have to play with this. Um, it may be different per green, but let's see if 115 works. That generally works pretty well. Don't quite love that. So let's go 120. looks pretty good. Now I'm going to create another copy of the initial green copy. Right click, duplicate. I'm just going to call this outer 2. Okay. I'm going to drag it below. So this is the bottom layer. Or uh, below the other green copy and the Green copy outer one. I'm going to do edit, transform, scale. We're going to make this one, let's say, 140. See how that looks? Okay, I think that's going to end up looking pretty good. And then we're going to do, uh, we're going to save it there at the checkbox. File, save. back on over to Unity, let it build, and we have to find our green that we just modified. Which one's up here in this corner? And there we have that effect. And you could go out and you could, you know, keep going. You could do another ring on the outside of that. Um, I got rid of the layer that was below it, so let me show that real quick. So there was a, uh, there were actually mo lines on this layer, or on this hole, sorry. Before, I do a terrible job of, of naming things, but here it is. And um, you can see it's kind of showing, the mo lines are now showing, the, the vertical mo lines are showing through the ring mo lines, and I don't want that to happen. Um, so what that means is I've got to take this pattern fill and I've got to move it below the green mo lines that we just created and now it stops. And you have this over top so I can do file, save, come back into Unity. And now we'll have our vertical mo lines to go with our circular mo lines. Okay, I hope that helps everyone. If you have any questions, hit me up on Discord. I'd be happy to help. Um, um, thanks for watching.